it's all that jerk's fault. But it's up to us to figure out who that jerk is. Happy Apple Picking Day! If you want a chance for your story to be featured on Am I the Bad Apple, you can submit it to my subreddit, r slash am I the bad apple. And a quick reminder, cause I think we all need it. We all come from different branches of the apple tree. We all have different experiences. We all have different perspectives. We all have different boundaries. Something that may cross a boundary for someone else might not cross a boundary for you. And that's okay. I love when you guys discuss your ideas in the comments. I encourage it. We are practicing civil communication. But something some people aren't realizing is that it's okay to disagree. Yelling at someone because something that crosses your boundaries doesn't cross theirs is kind of weird. <laughs> you can value boundaries and still have different boundaries than somebody else. That's okay. Sometimes someone might change your mind when you guys discuss. Sometimes you might change someone else's. But deciding that, oh, well, they're not open to discuss because their mind isn't changing is also a little weird. It's okay if someone hears you out and still doesn't agree with you. That happens. So without further ado, Let's get started with this week's episode of Am I the Bad Apple? Let's go apple picking! Apple number one. Am I the bad apple for not punishing my daughter for cheating? My husband and I have a seven-year-old daughter together, Layla. A few months ago, Layla got a boyfriend named Lucas. They're both seven, so it's obviously not a real relationship. They just hold hands sometimes and draw each other hearts for Valentine's Day. This week, apparently, Layla was holding hands with another boy who also sent Layla a Valentine's Day letter, and it upset Lucas very much. We only found out because Lucas's parents called us that he wouldn't be coming over this Saturday because he's really upset with Layla. My husband was livid. He wants to punish Layla and wants me to have a talk with her about faithfulness. At first I thought he was joking, but no, he's serious. He says that Layla cheated on Lucas and that I, as her mother, should do something about it. I told my husband, Layla's seven. She's not a cheater, so I'm not gonna treat her as such. He then accused me of raising a cheater and encouraging bad behavior, but I don't think it's that serious. Am I the bad apple for not wanting to punish Layla? All right, I know this upsets some people when I say this. I don't really know why it's kind of strange, but I'm gonna say it anyways. I'm not a parent. So take my ideas and opinions on this with a grain of salt because I do not have any, oh, there's a little hair right there. <laughs> Let's put that somewhere back here. I don't have any experience parenting children. I don't. And I don't know why it upsets some people when I say that. I guess they can just be mad. Because I know as soon as I don't say it, someone who's never watched me before is gonna get so offended that I'm giving parenting advice not being a parent. <laughs> Y'all, it's the internet. I can never win, it's fine. I know there's a lot of people that have very different opinions on like children relationships and children dating. I don't personally see anything wrong with like the seven year olds having little relationships. Cause like I see it as, you know, emotionally experimenting. It, it's like when you growing up, you learn like your boundaries when it comes to different kinds of friends. Like what kind of friend you want? What kind of friend you want to be? Like most of the time, the friends that you have at like age seven are not the exact same friends that you have at age 25. And you might have like a friend or two that follows you throughout the way. Like I, you know, my first friend I made when I was three and we're still very close. My next oldest friend, Lauren, I went, we were what, 12? Been like close to 15 years. But like the point is most people that you're friends with as a kid, you know, it's, it's like aren't the same people you stay friends with. And I don't personally see anything wrong with like learning lessons from those friendships that you either stay with or grow out of through the years. And I kind of see it the same way with like little play relationships. Again, I don't have kids and my opinion on that might be completely different if I had children. If your first relationship is when you're 16, 18 years old, in my opinion, 
when you don't have any experience when it comes to like boundaries in relationships or like what it's like to be in a relationship, I feel like there's a danger of like you're more likely to be manipulated or pushed around or not understand what is or is not okay. And again, I don't know, like I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't have kids. But like I just don't see anything wrong with like these little play relationship things, you know? Like I think that like even with with this example, like you can have some really good conversations to teach kids about emotional intelligence. But regardless, I can't imagine taking a second grader's relationship so seriously. Like, if you're if you've been on my page for any amount of time, you know that like we don't sympathize with cheaters here. Like we we have no sympathy for them. Like they are not they're not safe here on this page. But I would never put a seven year old in that category. Cause let's be honest, like a second grader is not developed enough mentally to understand what that is and what that means. Like they don't know, they're seven. So do I think that it would be a really good discussion and conversation to have with Layla about like, hey, this hurt Lucas's feelings and this is why this hurt Lucas's feelings. And as you grow older and like have other kinds of relationships, this is why these kinds of things upset people and hurt people's feelings. That like that to me is a good lesson. There's just such a good opportunity for emotional intelligence, but I don't know, like, this seven year old wasn't in her brain thinking, oh, this is adultery, you know, like she doesn't understand. And so for me, um, as like, especially as a former teacher, I don't view punishment as just like a, you hurt someone so now you have to hurt. Like when it comes to kids and punishments, I'm a firm believer that there needs to be some kind of lesson, like the punishment must fit the crime. So I can't imagine what kind of punishment you have in mind for a second grader that like really doesn't understand what she's doing, you know? Let's be honest for a minute. I hope we're not insinuating that we genuinely believe it's normal for kids to start dating in second grade and then grow up and end up getting married and only be with each other from the time that they're seven until they get married. And I'm not saying it never happens. I know one couple that did start dating in middle school and they got married and now they have a baby. And I wanna say the other might have even been elementary school. Like it happens. I'm not saying it doesn't. I know people, but like it's not common. So I feel like punishing her like she just cheated on her husband is like, they're seven, man, they're seven. So I'm with mom having a conversation, but no, I wouldn't punish personally, so I'm going good apple. Now if this was like a 16 year old, I would be singing a different tune because that is like someone who is purposely making a conscious choice and understands what that means and understands those dynamics, but it's not. It's someone who's seven, so. Apple number two. Am I the bad apple for making fun of my brother for getting dumped? My brother is a very hardworking man and at 27 is now very wealthy and doing great for himself. He's been with this one girl for six months and I got very close to her. We became great friends cause we just have a lot in common. I never knew there was anything wrong in their relationship except for this week when she texted me saying that she would love to come hang out with me like we had planned, but she and my brother just broke up and she didn't think it would be appropriate anymore. I asked her what happened and she said she was sick and tired of auditioning to prove she was with my brother for the right reasons. Apparently my brother's been very paranoid that she's only with him for his money. He would test her like leaving out his bank statements on their bed and getting upset cause she picked them up. He would choose to take her out to really nice restaurants and then forget his wallet just to watch her reaction when she had to pay the bill. He would even ask for nice things for holidays like Christmas and Valentine's Day and purposely not get her anything after she just spent hundreds of dollars on him and then have a gotcha moment if she questioned it. I was shocked, so I obviously needed to hear my brother's perspective. We spoke and he told me everything she said was true in that there's nothing wrong with making sure his girlfriend's with him for the right reasons. I guess he left his bank statement on the bed and was peeking through the crack in the door to see if she would be curious and pick up the papers. 
I asked, does it not make sense that if something's laying around where it shouldn't be, that someone would pick them up to put them where they're supposed to go? He said no. The moment she looked at them, he knew in his gut that she was intrigued by all the money it said he had. So he set up the restaurant idea and purposefully racked up a $500 bill to see if she'd be upset when he forgot his wallet. I said, she's an elementary school teacher. You asked to go to the expensive place. Don't you think she was more upset that she had to pay to go somewhere out of her budget that you requested? He said, no, definitely not. He said the straw that broke everything was that during the holidays, he asked for new rims for his car and gaming consoles, and she got them for him. But just to test her, he got her nothing. And she asked where her presents were, as if she felt she deserved an expensive gift. He knew right then and there that he needed to confront her. And he did, and told her that he thought she was only there for his money. She said, well, if you're that paranoid, let me do us both a favor and end this right here and now. She dumped him and immediately blocked him. Now he's all upset about that gold digging jerk of an ex-girlfriend and <laughs> That's when I laughed and called him the jerk. He said I would never understand what it's like to be a rich man. And I said, you know what? You're right. But if you think any woman would degrade herself to your tests and be okay with that, you're delusional. And then I was pretty sure he was destined to be alone forever if that's how he thought it was appropriate to treat people. Well, now he's sulking and saying that I'm kicking a man while he's down and I could be more respectful of his feelings. But I think he's being ridiculous so who's the bad apple here oh my gosh I I don't even know where to start so first things first there are 100% people in this world who without hesitation would take advantage of people and their money and their assets or whatever and that's gross behavior okay I'm not a fan and I think it's very valid to be aware and cautious I mean that's why things like prenups and things like that exist you know for that kind of caution because that kind of risk is real. I'm not a fan of like testing your significant other in the relation. Like I don't, mm -mm, mm -mm. Like a few weeks ago, we saw that one girl that created a fake medical emergency just to see if her boyfriend cared enough. No, absolutely not. I think the sister was completely, completely right about everything, you know? Like, if there's a random piece of paper somewhere where it shouldn't be, who wouldn't pick it up to see what it is and like, where does it need to go? Like, <laughs> what? Or like, if you are requesting, I wanna go somewhere expensive that I know is out of your budget and you purposely rack up $500, like that's a that's a very expensive bill. I don't, I don't even wanna know what you ordered. That's an insane amount of like one night of dinner. Who wouldn't be annoyed that you asked to go somewhere expensive, that like not just expensive, extravagantly expensive, and they got stuck on their very small salary footing the bill when that's where you wanted to go. Like I'm all for in relationships like taking turns paying for bills and splitting costs and things like that. Like I'm 100% for that, absolutely. But there is a difference between sharing costs and purposefully going out of your way to rack up something that's way out of your partner's budget just to see if they're willing to pay. Like that's messed up, that's manipulative. I think that's gross. Like it would be so different if she was demanding to go to all these expensive places and wasn't willing to pay. But like that wasn't the case, you wanted to go there. You set up the dinner, you set up the extravagant bill. That might be in your budget, but it's not in hers. Like, that's just not reasonable, okay? And lastly, when you're doing holidays with your significant other, again, I think it's very normal and okay and valid for couples to decide, oh, we're not gonna be doing presents for each other this year. That's fine. Avery and I always say we're going to do that, um, and it never works out because we both like love to get each other presents so much. But like, that's not what happened. You asked for expensive things. You asked for new rims for your car. That's not cheap. You asked for gaming consoles. Those aren't cheap, especially on a teacher's salary. You think it's like, crazy that as you're exchanging gifts on holidays that she's like oh you didn't get me anything she's not the red flag here my guy you are like oh she only wants me for my money what money you're not spending anything on her 
What money are you talking about? She's not seeing any of it. Like, oh my God, some people like are so delusional sometimes. Like this is, you're the red flag in my opinion, okay? So no. And I, I don't see anything that the sister said as like a, making fun of just to be mean and cruel. Like sometimes us older sisters just have to give our little brothers a reality check, okay? Like I know I've definitely given my little brother one and I, there, there's a little bit of a difference. My brother, I trained very well. He's a very kind man. Um, I'm usually having to give him the reality check that he is being taken advantage of and that he needs to run for the hills like this ex-girlfriend has clearly done. And you know, sometimes those reality checks, they don't feel good, but sometimes our little brothers just need a little bit of a mm, emotionally and that happened. So like to me, that is all this sister did was give that bit of a much needed blunt reality check. Um, and I think it was warranted. There might be some people who disagree with me, but you know, I would probably do the same thing to my brother if he, which Ethan would never. By the way, ladies, he's single, just saying. One of the reasons that my brother feels comfortable talking to me about like his, his life and relationships is because he knows that I will be blunt and I will tell him when I think he's wrong and I will tell him when I think that he's being taken advantage of and I will tell him, like I will be very real with him. And that's why I love the friendship that my brother and I have, but I'm going good apple on this one for sure. Apple number three. Am I the bad apple for sending flowers to another woman? We all have best friends at work and mine just so happens to be a woman. No big deal, right? Well, to my girlfriend it is. The woman in question and I are pretty close as the result of working next to each other for the past year and we joke that we're work spouses, but nothing goes beyond that except for the occasional good morning text. Long story short, she and I were talking about Valentine's Day and she mentioned how in high school she never got Valentine's Day grams or flower carnation things that the schools would send out for like Valentine's Day grams or candy grams or anything. This surprised me cause she's a solid 10. I told her how I only ever got white flowers, which white flowers symbolize friendship and that was always really embarrassing cause no girls ever wanted to send me pink or red flowers. We both bonded over the disappointment and joked that being work spouses, hey, maybe we would get each other flowers this year. I decided to take her up on this and in an appropriate manner, sent her a bouquet of white carnations in the mail to express my appreciation of her and our friendship. Nothing more than that. Ugh. The thing is though, I forgot to change the delivery date to a week later on a day that my girlfriend wouldn't be home and they got delivered today instead. I wanted to change the delivery day cause I knew that if my girlfriend saw them, she would freak out and be mad and she just wouldn't understand. To be clear, I don't think this counts as an omission of guilt at all. Again, I just knew she would overreact cause she's super emotional and unbearably insecure at times. Well, yeah, the flowers arrived on a day my girlfriend was home and she answered the door and immediately thought they were for her. When she picked up the tag and saw that it was my coworker's name, she was pissed. I told her why I got them for my work friend and she started crying. I explained the story behind it and how white is platonic, they're not red or pink flowers. And I told my girlfriend that I had super romantic plans for Valentine's Day for her with red roses because red is more romantic, but I just can't get through to her. She said it's emotional cheating, which I completely disagree with. Like I don't believe in that or half the buzzwords that these chicks on Twitter throw around just to feel victimized. I just think my girlfriend's blowing this way out of proportion. Me and my work friend have never done anything romantic and I'm a dedicated boyfriend, but apparently one kind and thoughtful gesture to another woman makes me a monster. I'm pretty sure my relationship is over unless I apologize and admit I was wrong, but I also feel like this is a matter of principle and that I'm the victim here. Like she's just being irrational. So is she being ridiculous or am I being short sighted? Immediately no, immediately no, immediately no. Oh my gosh, I cannot. So here's the thing. I'm very aware that different relationships have different boundaries, okay? This is one of those things I was talking about at the very beginning. My opinion on this is going to be strictly based on like me and my values and my morals. You might have a completely different opinion than me because you have different boundaries and that is okay. You're not going to change my mind 
mind on this one. For me, this is a completely rotten apple because to me, this is so disrespectful, okay? And I'm gonna tell you exactly why. First of all, there's nothing wrong, in my opinion, with men and women being friends, right? When I was still a teacher, my teacher bestie was a guy. His name is Trav. We're so close, we still text. I would never, 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 never in a million years try to call him my work husband. No, because I only have one husband, and that is Avery Rogers, and he only has one wife, and that is me, and let me tell you, if I found out there was some woman out there who was trying to label herself as Avery's work wife, no, absolutely not. I'm the wife, it's just me, I'm the only one. And I know that would bother me tremendously. So I would never in a million years imagine doing that to him. Whether, like Avery likes to say like he doesn't care about those things. He doesn't get jealous, he doesn't get bothered, blah, 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 blah. Congratulations Avery, you're better than everybody. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. But it would bother me. And I feel like if it would bother me, it would be so disrespectful to do to him. Whether it bothers him or not, it's about respect. It's about mutual respect. I wouldn't want that situation happening, so there's no way it's happening on my end either. And that, to me, is so important. And if you're in a relationship where like that doesn't bother either of you, and you both have your own little work spouses, go at it, be happy. I don't care, it doesn't, like, it's not my business because you both are happy with it. Like, right, you have, we all have our own boundaries, we all have our own values and morals, and that's fine, but for me, when you're in a, a two-person relationship, if there's something, if this person is saying, this is my boundary in our relationship, and I don't want you to have a work spouse, that's when it's not okay for me. And she's clearly saying, I'm not comfortable with you calling another woman a wife. And oh, like, like this is how ridiculous this sounds, right? Oh my gosh, my coworker is so hot. I can't believe people weren't pining for her in high school because she's just so hot. And I can't imagine why my girlfriend doesn't like the fact that like I'm calling her my wife and I'm buying her Valentine's Day things and like the color of the flowers matter, okay? And I was only just trying to do stuff behind her back because I knew it would make her uncomfortable and then I got caught and I can't figure out why she's mad. Like how obsessed you are with how attractive she is. Even just the fact that you started so early in the story with, well, I give her good morning text, and she's a solid 10, and I can't believe people in high school weren't obsessed with her. Like, words matter, right? And there is this episode of The Office where Pam is pregnant with her second child, right? And her replacement comes in, and her replacement is a very attractive woman. And she asks Jim, don't you think she's hot? Don't you think she's pretty? Don't you think she's attractive? And he's like, no, I don't see it. And Pam knows, she's like, I know this girl's hot, man. I, I don't know why Jim won't, won't admit to that. And Jim turns to the camera and he talks to the camera and he says, no, I'm not going to tell my nine month pregnant wife that I think another woman is attractive because it's not going to do anyone any good. It is only going to hurt. Like, it does nothing positive. What's the point? And I think that's so important, right? Like, that is is just respect, you know? Another, such a big red flag for me is like, <laughs> emotional cheating doesn't exist. Well, that's just like an excuse for women to victimize themselves. No, immediately no immediately know. That is just such a red flag, man. Such a red flag. I, bad apple, rotten apple, all the way. This guy just, you know what? I would be so interested, because he said like, my relationship's probably over unless I sign him in the wrong, but I think I'm a victim. I would be so interested to know if he shoots his shot with his uh, coworker when they break up. I wanna, no, 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 I know it's going to happen. I'm interested in how long it'll take. I give it a month. Maybe not even. Maybe not even. What do you think? <laughs> apple number four. Am I the bad apple for not punishing my daughter for insulting an autistic kid? I have a 12 year old daughter and I know I'm a little biased, but she's beautiful. My daughter's in middle school and a lot of the boys at her school are starting to get massive crushes on her and it's actually kind of bothering her. She hates it. She doesn't like the attention. She doesn't want a boyfriend. She thinks she's too young to start dating and she's honestly started becoming really blunt about it. She's a pretty popular girl at school, but there's already been an incident where a boy bullied her because she said no to dating him. It was a whole thing and the school was useless. They didn't help her at all. They just kind of let her get bullied and harassed and 
I don't know what else to do. I just feel terrible for her. Well, now there's another incident. There's a boy in her school that's been crushing on her for a long time. He keeps asking her out and she keeps saying no, but he's not really getting it. I don't really think that's his fault though. He's autistic and I really just think that he isn't understanding the social cues and the social norms surrounding it, so I didn't think much of it. The last time he approached her was last Valentine's Day. He asked her to be his Valentine and she said no. She didn't hear from him. It's now summertime and she hadn't heard from him again, so I thought maybe he finally got the message. Well, I guess not. There's an annual school picnic that happens right before the new year and we decided to go. She wanted to see her friends and I thought it would be super fun and nice outside, but the boy showed up and approached her again. I saw it all go down, so I thought I would go over there and try to bail her out. And as I started walking up, I heard him insisting that all she had to do was get to know him because he's such a nice guy and she would see what a perfect match they are. My daughter snapped and said, no. Leave me alone, you freak. I told you so many times, I'm not interested in dating you. I grabbed her and we left soon after that. Well, now I'm getting calls from both the school and the kid's mom saying that I have to teach my daughter about tolerance and that she needs to be punished for insulting him like that. Honestly, I'm defending her. I'm not punishing her for saying no to dating somebody. I've already had conversations with her about letting boys down gently. And she's been super polite before, but he's not getting the message and is constantly harassing her about dating him. My daughter shouldn't feel bad about saying no to boys and the school should be doing more to keep them from harassing her. I don't know what else to do. I just, I feel good in my decision in sticking up for her, but I just need to know. Was I the bad apple? I, I think I'm going to get mixed responses on this right now. Here's, hear, hear me out for a second. I'm 100, 1,000% 1, on board with mom making sure that this daughter knows how to say no and stand her ground and feels good and not afraid to reject someone's uh, romantic interactions and advances. Like 100% super disappointed in the school and not taking it more seriously that when boys are getting rejected, they're harassing and bullying the girls that are rejecting them. Like that's a problem that needs to be addressed, that needs to be handled. And I'm 100% down for this mom telling this her daughter, you don't have to date if you don't want to. You can say no, like you can be firm and you don't have to coddle boys feelings if they're not taking no for an answer. Like I'm 100% for that. The one thing that I'm, I'm getting a little stuck on is the insult that she used. Like if she were to like yell at him, like you're not taking no for an answer. I've told you over and over, you're such a jerk, leave me alone like I would definitely be more on board but calling him a freak feels very pointed to me and I I'm having a little trouble moving past that particular insult towards an autistic kid and it's it's also really hard because you know I don't I don't know anything about this kid you know I as a former teacher I did have a lot of um, students with autism all over the spectrum in my classroom but I don't I don't know this kid I don't know where he is on the spectrum I don't know his understanding of social norms and social cues like that so we don't know if he genuinely isn't understanding or if he is just being a jerk but regardless there are some hateful people out there who use very particular words when insulting special needs individuals and freak is one of them and so i just i'm having trouble moving past a very pointed insult like like to me i'm having trouble justifying well he's being disrespectful so you get to like poke fun of his disability i don't personally love that again i don't think that people should coddle the feelings of people who are harassing them and won't take no for an answer. Like that's not what I'm saying at all. I just can't tell how pointed that insult was. Like that particular word, that particular label, you know what I mean? And I do think that it's a really big problem. Um, and you know, something I, I've been actually thinking about this all day because this week um, I planned on doing a Valentine's themed podcast episode with Avery talking about dating and things like that. And something that I was already thinking for that episode is this idea that um, 
the movie industry has really created this very unfortunate stigma that if guys are just persistent and like if a girl just takes the time to get to know someone she'll date you and it'll be great and you'll love each other and like that has created a lot of issues for women in the modern world where like some men just really think that if they keep trying and trying and trying and trying that it's not harassment it's just being persistent and she'll love it but that's no no means no if someone is saying no then you don't keep bothering them you don't keep harassing them like that can get very creepy and that can get very scary very quickly and so again it, it's very hard not knowing from this young man i i don't know what his disability looks like. I don't know if he genuinely believes. Take out the genuinely believes. So I, I'm, I'm teetering between good apple and crab apple because I love everything that she's doing for her daughter in regards to standing up for herself and being able to put her foot down and say no. Like, I love all of that. I just would love if she talked to her daughter about like, like if you're gonna be harsh and put your foot down and like, fight fire with fire. I think that there are like still lines, yeah, at least for me, you know? And for me, that particular insult, knowing this particular person's background, to, for me, I'm not a fan of that. So I, I, if she like acknowledged that, I think I would be completely good apple, but she didn't. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go crab apple because again I love everything that she's doing for her daughter and her confidence and her like right to feel safe and secure in her life and her right to say no it's just that that one thing I can't get past and you know maybe there's a perspective that I'm missing or maybe someone read it differently than me maybe someone um, can like give me a different perspective that I haven't thought of like I think there are people that could change me from crab apple to good apple but as of right now I'm going crab apple for sure just because of that one thing and again I say it as a former teacher who really saw some of the struggles that some of my old students with uh, disabilities and autism dealt with, and I'm like a very no nonsense, no tolerance for like anything of any tomfoolery of that nature of like the the name calling and the labels and the bully, like, again, I'm also no nonsense and no tolerance for boys harassing girls and like things like that, 100%. Like, like it's not mutually exclusive, you know what I mean? Um, I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> but that is, that is my thought process. That is my like one concern, you know what I mean? I'm rambling now. Vixie is ready for some treats. So we're gonna have to wrap up, huh my babes? You're so sleepy. All right, I got, oh no, no, two good apples, a bad apple and a crab apple. It's the curse. My Valentine's Day is cursed! Uh, I guess that's what I get for uh, wearing all black on Valentine's Day. Well, I guess Valentine's Day isn't today, but... Fixie, why didn't you warn me? At least that's what I got. I would love to know what you guys got down in the comments. Did you get something similar to me? Did you get something completely different? Again, I think some of these stories today will really depend on your own boundaries and that might be different than someone else and that's okay, that's totally fine. I think I think the big thing to remember here when we're like talking and communicating in the comment sections is that you can have a boundary for yourself, right? But you can't really determine the boundaries of others, right? So like. You can say, oh, I would be okay for my husband to have a work wife, but you can't really decide, oh, they should be okay with me having a work wife. Like that's, I think that's the thing to consider when discussing, or you know, like I would be okay with my in-laws using my vacation house, but you can't decide that I can't be okay with it. <laughs> Cause again, you can, love boundaries, you can support boundaries. That doesn't mean that we all have the same boundaries. I don't know what's going on in your life, you don't know what's going on in my life, and that's okay. That's why we all have different boundaries and different lines, because we all got stuff going on that we don't know about, and that's okay. It happens, it's normal. <laughs> now for your well wishes today. I don't know what national day it is, I haven't looked, but it's because I figured it's Valentine's Day week. So my well wishes for you is that whatever it is you're doing this week, whether you're doing something with your partner, or you're doing something with your friends, or you're purposefully not participating, or you're just not caring about Valentine's 
Valentine's Day or your anti-Valentine's Day. I know there are those people out there. Whatever it is that you're doing, I hope you have a good time. Whether you're alone or getting over a breakup or with somebody or happily not with somebody, whatever it is, I just want you to have a good day, okay? I hope those that this applies to have a good time with their partner on Valentine's Day. And I hope those that it doesn't apply to has a great time getting discounted chocolate on Thursday. Not gonna lie, Avery and I do that every year. <laughs> We love discounted chocolate Thursday. I'm not gonna lie, I could really use a piece right now. So I have to go raid the house and see if we have any. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Hope you have a great rest of your day and hope to see y'all next week. Bye, my lovelies. Mwah.